oh, I like this one a lot because we could talk about, uh, have you listened to the weekend album at all? Yeah, almost all the oh, way through. So someone, uh, I, I believe the, the, their handle is super tight, which I also like. Um, <laughs> 1980s arrangements make me excited. How can we achieve it with that modern loudness? Um, I mean, I think the weekend, the production I really like on a lot of it. I think they did a pretty, a pretty great job. Um, some songs I like more than others. I'm still absorbing it. Um, I like that it's a full album, that sort of thing. But, but, and, and I also think that, that, uh, to a lesser extent, Ian Kirkpatrick on some of the, the Dua stuff, where I wouldn't say that it's, it, it's incredible. Some of it is not like quite as purely 80s throwback. It's much more kind of a hybrid going to the, the modern era. But, um, but there's some, there's some really good stuff. There's really good 80s stuff. Do you have, do you have thoughts? And I, I feel like you and I have actually talked about, 80s sounds and production and mixing before but 80s sounds and loudness certainly the, the kicks and snares yeah. have the same sort of compression and uh and in your faceness as a lot of modern things but somehow the weekend's done a good job ian's done a good job there's a few people doing i think good records you got thoughts on that generally yeah i, I yeah i mean I, I was keeping the name of the artist out like uh, five years ago like developing an artist that was going for like not going for like literally the same exact sounds that the weekend just put out. And we had, and I have unreleased 14 songs on a hard drive of those sounds. And that's what we were going for. It was like, how do we reinforce that? Right. There was, there's layers. It's like, well, use a 909 kick drum. The 909 is pretty fucking fat. Right. Um, or if you're using a 505, that's smaller. Um, let's uh, reinforce it with more of a hip hop punchy kick and layer that in and figure out the phase. So it works, right. There's ways to do that. Um, the thickness uh, in a lot of the like DX7, um, the, the DX7's pretty thick and juicy sounding. Like a lot of the Roland stuff from that era actually does sound good. I think that in the 80s, um, people were turning up the brightness on EQs on consoles so much in the studios that that's what was giving it that kind of cheap, thin sounding. I think tinny, actually, tinny thing. Yeah. All that tinny thing. I actually think that was post production um, and, and, and processing. I think the actual instruments themselves have a lot of body like that the, i think it's called the rubber bass sound it's on um one of the roland keyboards uh, uh one of the cheaper not like the the 106 not the classic ones like uh, some of the more off off um off the radar ones the rubber bass is so sick i think it might be dx7 i think it is a dx7 rubber bass so that's what's on the um um on like the i think it's the one that's on the kavinsky like um uh uh, night talk night, song night call the, night call night call night call song like night call? that's yeah. in one of the records on the weekend it's the same sound those sounds are fat so i don't actually have think that there's anything really to to do except for add more low end and, and warm up the sound also so that's what the, the weekend did it's the 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 warmness thing and i think uh and if there's anybody that was around in that era making records they could correct me but i believe 80s was really the era where people moved away from tube mics and tube stuff and we're yes. using FETs and more solid, solid state, state. And, exactly. and, and, and using fewer tape machines and things like that. And what yes. you get, and, and, you know, so you get a clearer, cleaner thing. But as we now have everything in computers, a lot of people, as we talk about all the time, have gone back and realized that the saturation and dynamic range compression you get from tape machines and tubes and now emulated in computers is a really pleasing thing. And so a lot of those 80s records sound more crisp and clear and sometimes tinny and harsh because they're throwing lots of bright EQ on and there's some extended low end, but it's missing a lot of the tube and tape squishiness and compression and thickness and richness that you get from that harmonic saturation. And now people are moving some of that back in um, yeah. I think, you know, again, I don't, I don't know the processing on the weekend record, but it sounds really good. And some of it does sound kind of retro and he's singing like the pet shop boys on that first song. And yeah, you know, some yeah, of it's yeah. kind of, it's, it sounds kind of goofy and interesting and different and confusing, but some of it sounds also a lot of it. Most of it sounds well, very let's not modern. forget, let's not forget that in the eighties is, you know, coke eight eighties for a reason, right? So you're in the studio, you're doing a bunch of lines of coke and your senses your hearing is being dulled by all of that so they're turning up like that's that's like what quest love talks about all the the decadal histories um history of, of decades of music like which drug was kind of in charge in the studio of that in yep. the 80s is coke right so Cocaine all that bright. brightness and and then that goes with the exactly and that goes with what you're saying is all this boost um all the high-end boosts are happening not into a tape machine per se 
but that's how the practice was like oh well there's no tape or tubes to suck up this brightness so it's just gonna go and it gets crazy gnarly and it's um so i actually don't think that's natural to what those sounds like going back to what i was saying um were happening when i listen to the let's talk about the weekend album for a little bit because yeah yeah uh as kate cutler said the best servant in a hot minute the mix is really good um I i've been uh, i was talking about this with mike miller yesterday because i'm such a hater on like all modern mixes coming out and until something's great so yeah. i want to talk about how i think that these records are pretty great sounding they really I, are. I still i um i still think like you know when i listen to the pmcs I, there's a bit too much upper bass for me and i wish there was a bit more sub in some of the records and that translates on different songs but I want to like give credit where credit's due. This is as good as mixes get right now in that pop world with all that density and jam packed. I think they sound tall, they sound deep. There's a lot of dimension to them. Um, Serban's style is very compact. And within that kind of vignetted window and that shape that he does, there's a lot of movement going on. Do I think personally that the space could be a little bit bigger? And I can, you know, I could comment on that all day, it's not necessary. It wouldn't, I don't know if it's going to make the records any better. Yeah. Um, so I think sonically speaking, it's very, very good. Um, I'm not overly inspired by it enough to like, it doesn't fuck my world up good. Yeah. Um, you know, that hasn't happened in a long time, sadly. I'm, I'm still waiting for that record to happen. Um, but I think the arrangements and the production is really great. My only issue is that none of it sounds um, innovative. Uh, mm. It sounds like a copycat. It sounds yeah. like we we went back to, like you said, Pet Shop Boys and Depeche Mode. And it's, it sounds like things that we've already heard before, sounding pretty similar to the way that they sounded. Um, and I don't like the majority of the lyrics. So it's hard for me to wrap my head around the weekend um, over these like kind of darker harmonics and these sounds and these interesting complex arrangements with these like really simple lyrics on top. It just doesn't feel right to me. So I'm, I'm having a hard time with the, the songwriting nature of, of the album, though I think the production level is, is pretty, um, pretty high, but again, not innovative. There's nothing about it that's like, whoa, I've never heard that. It's all sounds that we've heard before. And for us that grew up listening to 80s music, um, you know, I think there are sick moments. Uh, yeah. There's a moment, I love the concept of the whole Dawn FM thing and like the transitions and the radio programming is super cool. I forgot what the name of the song is offhand right now, but there's a time where he's like, we're going to go into easy listening now. And like, he takes it down, it gets slow. Yeah. I think those, those two songs that come after that are super boring and I could have done without that whole bit. But what I'm getting at is after that, there's a crazy arpeggiated bass sound that has so much top end and it's so gnarly. And I'm like, that's the shit that's fucking bold. Like on Take yeah. My Breath Away, when the when the hook comes in and the melody, and he stops singing and that synth pokes through with those eighth notes doing that counter melody, it's fucking bold and too loud and it's sick. And that's what yeah. the 80s were about. They were all bold moves that jumped out of the speakers. Not Probably not even intentionally. It was probably like laid down and then left alone, which is super cool. We've talked about that in some um, Bruce Wadian mixes on Michael Jackson where the shaker is just so damn loud. And you're like, all the percussion is so damn loud but if you're at low volume you hear michael and you hear energy and like yes. where's the energy coming from right yes. so i think the weekend there are moments on that album where whether it's a serpin choice or a max martin choice or i think swedish house mafia's drums on that record are the best sounding drums in a long time those sacrifice drums and the um whoa, whoa how could i make you love me i think it's the other one that they they produce like the drums are ridiculous and that's some of the best pop drums I've heard in a while. Um, but they're bold. They're not subtle. And I don't know if, if Serbin maintained that, what he did to it versus the production. But leaving those bold moments alone uh, or emphasizing them is what makes music to me feel, uh, feel compelling. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. We don't have sponsors. We don't run ads. We don't have a Patreon. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks.